The Temple Mount is the most contested area in the world. Jews, Christians and Muslims see this place as essential to their religion. The Golden Gate or in Hebrew Sha'ar Harahamimi, Gate of Mercy, is the center of this conflict. The gate was closed in 2003 by an Israeli court order to protect it from illegal excavations and use by Hamas affiliated groups. But on February 14, 2019, the Jordanian Muslim Waqf, who is given administrative control of the Temple Mount following the Six Day War in 1967, opened the area for Muslim prayer. Israel has tried to close the structure, but Palestinians continue to break in. Although Israel rejects any proposal from the Waqf to turn the structure into another mosque on the mount, the Muslim community would like to turn the gate into either a prayer hall or an Islamic institute of learning. This is the current situation and the background of the battle for the Golden Gate. This is not a battle that started when Israel became a nation again, but it is a battle that is centuries old. Many would say that this is not only a physical battle, but also a spiritual one. So why this gate is so important? Why was it sealed two times? Why there is a cemetery in front of it? In this episode, we will try to answer all those questions, as well as providing a good theological, historical and archaeological background to the Golden Gate. I will also provide you with the 3D models where you will be able to see how this gate would look like in ancient times. But before we do that, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to receive notifications of new videos. So let's begin. The old city of Jerusalem is surrounded by a large wall which has eight major gates. The eastern gate facing the Mount of Olives is unique as it is sealed shut. It is believed to be the oldest gate of the old city. This gate, when it was created, gave the most direct access to what would be the area of the Jewish temple. As it is the closest location to where the temple once stood, Jews would pray near this gate to be as close as possible to the holiest site. The eastern gate was ultimately sealed shut in 1541 by the Ottoman Sultan Suleiman. However, pure to this time, the gate was closed in 810 also by the Muslims, then reopened in 1102 by the Crusaders and then walled up again by Saladin, the first Sultan of Egypt and Syria and the founder of the Ayyubid dynasty. The exterior face of the gate as it remains from the 16th century is a sealed double entrance that leads into two vaulted halls. Even though the face of the gate has a 16th century appearance, there is a strong evidence that this gate stands on the remains of an ancient gate built by Jews that led to the first temple built by Solomon himself. Archaeologists have found physical remains of the first temple masonry visible around this gate. Inside today's Golden Gate, original posts were found that supported the entrance to the temple. Around the gate you can also see ancient stones that date back to the first temple period. In second temple times, the eastern gate to Jerusalem was called the Shushan Gate. Jewish tradition says that the Jews returning from exile in the Babylon and Persian empires carved on the Shushan Gate an image of the palace in the Persian capital of Shushan as an appreciation to the kings of Persia for helping them rebuild the temple and later Jerusalem. In 1969, the archaeologist Dr. James Fleming discovered an archway that is located, or to say better, 
buried directly under the current Gate of Mercy. Many believe that this arch was leading through stairs to the Shushan Gate. Okay, but let's answer this question. Why are we even talking about this gate? Why is it so important? Actually, standing next to this awesome structure just might send shivers down your spine while imagining the future event that many believe could take place here. Today, opposite to the Golden Gate on Mount of Olives, you can see a huge Jewish cemetery. Every religious Jewish person wants to be buried here on the Mount of Olives, because according to the Bible, this is where the Jewish Messiah will come to establish his everlasting kingdom. The necessity to be buried on Mount of Olives is connected to an ancient prophecy by the Jewish prophet Zechariah, who foretells that the Messiah will arrive and stand on the Mount of Olives. In Zechariah 14.4 we read, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And guess what? When Messiah will come, there will be a huge resurrection of the righteous dead, and those that were buried on the Mount of Olives will see the Messiah first. No wonder this place cost millions of dollars to be buried. Additionally, many interpret that according to Ezekiel, another Jewish prophet, after the Messiah will count down on the Mount of Olives, he will enter the temple through the eastern gate. In Ezekiel 44 we read, Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince, the prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate, and shall go out by the way of the same. The prophet Ezekiel also writes that the glory of God himself will re-enter the temple through the eastern gate in the final days. In Ezekiel 43.4 we read, And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east, However, this gate is not only important because of the future events that surround it, but also because of the significance in the past. God has been using the eastern gate of the walled city in his great plan of atonement and redemption since biblical times, such as with the ritual of the scapegoat on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. When the high priest performed purification rituals on the Mount of Olives, he could see over the Shushan Gate and into the sanctuary of the temple. Because it is near the Mount of Olives, the Shushan Gate was used on the most holy day of the Jewish year, the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, in God's atonement process for the nation of Israel. According to the ancient Jewish writings in the Mishnah, two goats were purchased on Yom Kippur at the East Gate. One goat was sacrificed in the temple courtyard to make atonement for the most holy place, the tent of meeting, and the altar, because the uncleanness and rebellion of Israelites, whatever their sin had been, Another goat, the scapegoat, was sent out through this eastern gate after the high priest laid both of his hands on its head and confessed over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites. Then the hands were put on the goat's head. With all the sins of the people of Israel on the goat, someone led it through the east gate over a walkway that crossed the Kidron Valley to the Mount of Olives 
and then into the Judean wilderness and tradition says over a cliff. Some believe there was a special archway that crossed the Kidron Valley so that no contact would be made with the dead bodies in the cemeteries which would make the people ritually unclean. We must also remember that this gate is important for the Christians too. According to the New Testament teaching, while the first Old Covenant scapegoat left the East Gate to make atonement for the nation of Israel, Christians believe that Yeshua, Jesus, entered through this gate to usher in a New Covenant atonement for the sins of all mankind. In Zechariah 9.9 we read, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Yeshua descended the Mount of Olives in the east and entered Jerusalem through what many believe is the East Gate. He did this on the day known by Christians as Palm Sunday, the same day that Passover lambs were being selected and would be sacrificed four days later. According to the New Testament narrative, the people didn't understand it yet, but by waving palm branches and shouting Hosanna, which means save us now, they had selected Yeshua as their Messiah, their scapegoat and Lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. It was only four days later that he would carry away all their sins on an execution stake, the cross, fulfilling the messianic prophecy in Isaiah 53. Ok, we looked at the Jewish perspective, at the Christian perspective and now let's look at the Muslim perspective. Why is this gate so important for Muslim people? Islam teaches that on Judgment Day, righteous Muslims who receive God's mercy will enter the gate, which in Arabic is also known as the Gate of Mercy or the Gate of Eternal Life. This is believed to be the Eastern Gate on Temple Mount. In addition, many believe that Arabs have long wanted to occupy this site to prevent Jewish Messiah and his forerunner, the prophet Elijah, from entering the Eastern Gate, as Jewish tradition teaches. This understanding helps explain the battle for the current gate over the centuries. The Ottomans, who were of course Muslims, built a cemetery in front of it most likely because Islam teaches that Elijah is a Jewish priest. And in the Bible, Jewish priests are not allowed to come near dead bodies. Nevertheless, all that trouble created by Muslims to stop the Jewish Messiah from coming through the Eastern Gate of Mercy is in vain. According to the Bible, the Messiah can make unclean things clean again. For him, this will not be a problem. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this episode. As always, I encourage you to comment. You can also subscribe to this channel to stay informed about next episodes on Jerusalem's history. If you like my work, you can support me by joining the Israel My Channel. Have a great day and see you soon.